the benefit of um, being raised by a country dad. Anybody raised by a country dad? You, you know you're raised by a country dad because they got all kinds of really funny sayings that they say all the time. Like my dad would say, man, I was nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Anybody ever heard, heard their dad say something like that? My dad had a, had a Ford truck, and da dads are real proud of their trucks. And we, every time we pull up next to a Chevy, he'd say, son, this is Ford country. On a quiet night, you can hear the Chevy's rust. Right? So, anybody raised by a country dad? Let's hear it for country dad, right? So they asked me to come up and, uh, and speak to you guys about networking. I, I did this presentation last year, uh, or maybe it was the year before, and, and uh, it was really well received. People really appreciate it. I, yes, I, I will get you out of your seat, get you out of your comfort zone, make you meet somebody today. Um, but I'm not going to do exactly what I did before. I've learned through bitter experience that you don't, it's never as good the second time. So I need to devise something that's a little bit different uh, this year. But we are going to do a very similar exercise. And um, so when I started thinking about what other exercises could we do, uh, that there is a, what I did last time was I built this really crazy stack. How many of you remember that? Uh, there, was a, there was a name plate and stuck in your lawn, right? There's a house teeter tottering with the family and all this sort of thing. Glove connected to an airplane that doesn't have wings and, and all this stuff. But there is another, and it's actually a simpler way to learn to, um, it's, it's a tip or a hint or a crutch to create conversations with other people. Because for most people, most people are uncomfortable, at least a little bit, in a situation like this. Would you agree? And, and you know that you are because when you come in the room, you immediately seek out somebody that you know, and you gravitate towards that person. I'm over here with Chris, and, and I can just talk to Chris all day because we're friends. We've known each other for several years. We're in same organizations, and this is easy, right? But out there are other people that I don't know as well, and it is a little bit uncomfortable. If it wasn't, then we would go right to those people, right? So how do you start that conversation? Because I think most of us are here to network, right? And if we come in here, we spend all our time with Chris and the people that we know, then it's easy to walk out of here and say, well, I didn't get a whole lot out of that other than maybe developing that relationship with Chris. But as far as meeting new people and developing those prospects beyond that, we have to go out of our comfort zone. So this is a, a crutch to help make that easier for you and show you just how easy it is to start a conversation and really learn something from somebody else. So the reason I brought up uh, Ford is that Ford is an acronym. Now my dad, you know, say, you know, your dads might say it's family on road dead, right? Or first on race day, depending on what your dad is. But for today, it's going to be a conversation starter. Ford, F, would be for family. O would be for occupation. R is going to be for recreation. And then D is going to be for dreams or goals. So F-O-R-D is what? Ford, F is for family, O, occupation, organizations, R, recreation, D is for dreams. You got to think about it, even whether it's somebody that we already know or we've met several times, if we don't know and we can't tell that person a lot about their family, we, if I can't tell you about Chris's family, I don't know him that well. I can't tell you about everything about his organization and, and his occupation. I don't know him that well. If I can't tell you about his um, recreation, what he likes to do outside of work when he's not working, I don't know him that well. right? And then last thing, I, I should know, what is his dream? What is he after? So if we just make that our goal when we go out to meet somebody is to ask a few questions, right? Because what's their favorite topic? Themselves. Themselves. People love to talk about themselves. And to be a good conversationalist, all we have to do is be a good listener. Learn to ask questions about their family, get them talking, and they'll do all the work. All you have to do is ask questions, and they will talk. Be, you know, Dale Carnegie, one of the, I think, his, the most important principle that he had in how to win friends and influence people is just be genuinely interested in people. And I've had people ask before, well, what if I'm really just not? I said, well, you, you pretend at least for a minute to be interested because the whole key to communication is just common ground. Because as soon as they bring up something that they've done in the past, like, you went to USC? I, what, what year did you go? 
live there. I didn't know that. Now you've got a connection, and it becomes a lot easier. Well, now you are interested because you have something in common. Does that make sense? That's all you're trying to do with these initial conversation starters is just find a connection to where it makes it a lot easier those barriers to communication come down. Does that make sense? All right, so when I ask you to, I'm going to have you get up, and I want you to do this with the, the table that is immediately next to yours. So these two tables right here, we'll do these two tables here. We'll do those two tables. You guys are going to have to go work with the table back there. But whatever table is next to you, you can't do this with somebody at your table because I guarantee you that's going to be inside your comfort zone. I want you to stand and find a partner. And then once you have your partner, stay, remain standing quietly until I give you further instructions. Go ahead and find a partner. <laughs> You know, it's, it's when you have no agenda and you just want to meet and you're interested in finding and learning about others, it's really, it's not that hard. It's, man, you got to right to that. Some of you wouldn't even find a third party. You're like, no, I like this person. I'm going to stick with this. Back in my comfort zone already, right? So force yourself out of your comfort zone. Meet those new people. Find those new connections. You never know who it is that you will meet. A couple of uh, starters that I think are, you know, are, are really make it easy to get into this is uh, one of my favorite questions is, what's your story? Tell, tell me about you. What, what's your story? Because that will get them instantly talking about what the thing that, that is most important to them. It's, I guarantee you it's going to be one of those family, organization, occupation, recreation, or, or their dreams or goals. It will be one of those things, but that will point you in the direction of where they're most interested, and it's just easy to just keep them going. When you run out of stuff on that topic, switch over to the other one. But you got Ford, right? You got what? Family. Occupation, recreation, dreams and goals. So um, do that and try that. I'm going to wrap up uh, with uh, something my sister actually sent yesterday. This was obviously published in a newspaper. I have no idea what paper it was, but I uh, read it and I said, man, this is, uh, this is worth, um, worth repeating. So the title of this article is God Said No. I asked God to take away my habit. God said no. It's not for me to take away, but it's for you to give up. I asked God to make my handicapped child whole. God said no. His spirit is whole. His body is only temporary. I asked God to grant me patience. God said no. Patience is a byproduct of tribulations. It, is in, it isn't granted. It is learned. Well, I asked God to give me happiness. God said no. I give you blessings. Happiness is up to you. I asked God to spare me pain. God said, no. Suffering draws you apart from worldly cares and brings you closer to me. I asked God to make my spirit grow. God said, no. You must grow on your own, but I will prune you to make you more fruitful. That's more pain. I asked God for all things that I, that I may enjoy life. And God said, no. I will give you life. So that you may enjoy all things. I asked God to make me a great networker. God said no. I give you the Lexington Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> the networking is up to you. You see what I did there? I asked God to help me love others as much as he loves me. God said, ah, you finally have the idea. The day is yours. Make it a great week. Make it a great holiday. Have a great day. Thank you.